Hello, I'm Debbie Gatlin, and I want to thank you for taking time to listen to this teaching on the month of Tammuz. Tammuz is the fourth month on the Hebrew biblical calendar, and this month is packed full of exciting things that God wants to do in your life. Though this month and the next few months are considered some of the most dangerous of all the months of the year because of the things that have happened in the past, the things that have been promised by the Lord in this month is for you. I just hear, I just see like on one of those vice grips that you have or those wrenches with the little screws on it. You can tell I, I know a lot about wrenches, but, but they're made to hold fast. And I, I, I hear the, the scripture from See, First Thessalonians 5.21, but examine everything carefully, hold fast. That's what I hear. Examine everything carefully, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from every form of evil. Let me say that again. First Thessalonians, it's 5.21, but examine everything carefully, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from every form of evil. For this is a month where things ha have happened in the past that, that have caused people to lose their destiny and the purposes of God that he has for their life. See, this is a month of Reuben, and Reuben was the first of Jacob's son, sons, and his his name means behold a son. When Leah had Jacob, she was so thrilled that she was having a son because she felt so in love. So in Genesis 29, 31 through 32, it says, Now the Lord saw that Leah was in love and he opened up her womb. But Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son and named him Reuben. For she said, because the Lord has seen my afflictions, surely now my husband will love me. Now Reuben's name means behold a son or see ye a son, which what God is wanting you to know that this month is all about your sight, about guarding your sight and guarding your heart. You see, Reuben, who was the first of, of Jacob's sons, his inheritance was to inherit double portion. He was to be the leader in the tribe. He was to be the priest of the tribe. He was to rule over the tribe because he was the firstborn. And yet he forfeited it all when he went and laid with his father's concubine. And when he laid with her, he lost the inheritance. He lost everything that he had. Now, this is what, what Jacob prophesied over his son in Genesis 49, 3 through 4, because he went in, in to Bil Bilhel. It says, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power, but you're uncontrolled as water. You shall not have preeminence because you went up to your father's couch then you defiled it, and you went up to my couch. Then listen to this again. I'm going to say this again to you. First Thessalonians 5, 21. Let me say it again, but examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. During Reuben's time, when he was upon this earth, he threw away his destiny and his purpose. Because he did not guard his eyes. He did not guard his heart. But in times of hardship and difficulties, he threw it all away. He made for himself a golden calf, which was Bilhah, and, and went into her and defiled himself and lost everything. Now, this is also a month where God is a God that can redeem. He's a good, good God. That's why Jesus Christ died upon the cross. The stone for this month, carnelian, and it's they all it's also called a sardius. But if you look at the stone, this red carnelius, it looks like blood. And can I tell you that this month is all about how God can redeem 
all your junk, all your mistakes. But let me say this again. God wants you to hold fast to that which, to examine everything carefully. Look, look. This is the eyes to look. This is the eyes to turn away from evil. This is the eyes to look at what God sees. Remember what the Lord says in first, second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. It says this, that we don't look at the things that are seen, but we look at the unseen things. It doesn't matter what's not happening. It doesn't matter what is happening. What matters is what God sees, what God says. And when you look at the way, look at things the way God sees them, then you're going to, what? You're going to hold fast to that which is good. And you're going to be able to abstain from every form of evil. So the stone this month is the carnelian. And it's in Revelations. It's in, in Revelations 4, 3, Revelation 21, 20, Exodus 28, 19, and Exodus 39, 10, where this stone is mentioned. And let me say again, it looks like the blood of Jesus Christ. I love that in Revelations 12, 12, 11, it says how we overcome. How are we going to overcome in this month? Well, God's given us keys to overcome. In the, the a month of warfare and the month of difficulty, this is what God's given to you to overcome. Revelations 12, 11 say, says that he overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. What are you saying? Are you mumbling? Are you groaning? Are you murmuring? Are you, well, you're going to overcome by my blood and by the word of your testimony and loving not your life, even unto death. You're willing to lay it down, all down. I love Hebrews 10, 19. It says this about the blood of Jesus Christ. I'll let you know again, the, the, the stone, the carnelian stone, it looks like blood. Hebrews 10, 19. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus Christ, what? You, this is how you overcome in this month. You enter by the blood of Jesus Christ. You enter knowing that, that you're an overcomer because of his blood, that you've been redeemed by his blood. You've been justified by his blood. You've been made righteous by his blood. Hey, the death and destruction can will pass over when God sees the blood. Come on, you've been brought near by the blood. Come on, it's the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is a month also where you overcome, you put on worship, you worship God, you give him things. It keeps you from murmuring, it can, keeps you come from complaining, it keeps you from opening doors because your mouth is filled with the greatness and the goodness of God. It helps you focus because part of worship is not just opening your mouth, but is focusing on who he is, his greatness, his goodness, his kindness, his love for us. Come on. And that is your weapon this month. And to put on worship and to keep your nose in the Psalms. Sing it. Declare it. Speak it. Worship with it. Take the Psalms and just use it as a battle axe for the Lord this month. So this is the month of Reuben. And, you know, Reuben, he, again, he lost preeminence. He lost his destiny and the purpose that God has for him, had for him. But I love that God is a redeeming God. I love what, what Moses said about Reuben. Deuteronomy 33, this is what Moses says about Reuben. May Reuben live and not die, nor his men be few. See, Moses blessed him. God is a redeeming God. This is a month where you may feel like you have fallen so short. You may, may feel like that, that I'll never be what God's want me, God wants me to be. Turn your eyes away from your fav, your failures. Leave those things that behind. I love this one scripture in Philippians. It says that they do this. They leave the past behind and they reach forward to what lies ahead. The high call of God that's in Christ. Jesus, that's what God wants for us. He wants to, the, to leave the past behind and go forward in him, knowing that he's the God that can redeem every wrong thing that we've done. He's the God that will give us grace to walk this out before him. I love this, that God Almighty is our mighty God that, that rescues and saves us. This is a month again 
where behold the sun of your eyes. It's the, a month to guard your eyes. I love what Job said, that he had made a covenant with his eyes. They would not look upon a virgin. What? God wants you to make covenant with your eyes. To say, Lord, I give you my eyes. Give me the grace and the, the strength to turn away from evil, to look at things as you look at them. You've got to guard your gate. This is the time where it, you've got to fight to keep your eyes. You know, there's idols in all different ways. It can be the idol of pornography. It can be, be the idol of comfort or the idol of entertainment. Whatever. It can be, it doesn't have to be a golden calf that you think but whatever you trust in, whatever you cling to, whatever brings you hope, whatever brings you comfort, rather than the Lord, that's an idol. And God says, I don't want any idols in your life. Fix your eyes upon me. I love in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it says this, fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. You know what? He's the author. He's the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the Father. He says, fix your eyes on me. And you know what? You'll be able to run this race with endurance. I love that the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, many are in the race, but all run, but only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may win. For everyone that competes in the games, exercise self-control. Can I tell you that this month is about self-control? Reuben, he didn't have self-control in a time of, of deep testing, in the time when hardship and difficulty had been running through their family. They had one hardship after another hardship, and they kept moving and moving. They were fleeing from what was familiar to them, fleeing and running and going and and when they finally got there, that's when Reuben fell. You know what? We've got to have self-control. We have let we have to let the Holy Spirit. That's one of the fruit of what the Holy Spirit, precious Holy Spirit. It's it's Him as we submit ourselves to to God. It's Him that will empower us and produce in us the self-control that we need during this time. This is a month where the spies went into the promised land. Remember in Numbers where the spies go into the promised land and they're, you know, this, they, they're going into the promised land. Twelve were sent in and all through this month, the twelve are examining the promised land. Now we know the end of the story, but during this time, we know this from the story that ten were filled with fear. Ten were looking at things in the natural. Ten were saying, yes, this is an exceedingly good land filled with milk and honey. It's everything God said it was, but there's giants in this land. This land has high-walled cities, and this land devours its people. We're like grasshoppers in the sight of the people of this land. It's highly defended. And yet, J and yet Caleb and Joshua said this. Caleb says, let's go conquer the land. If we found favor with God, God will deliver it into our hands. Their defense has been taken from them. Come on, let's take the land. So Joshua and Caleb, they looked at the land and they, they were looking at God. That God is much bigger than you could possibly imagine. God is well able to deliver these people into our hands. God is able, well able to bring down fortified cities. God is well able to destroy the giants. God is well able. This is the God we serve. What are you looking at during this time? That's why we have to put on that praise. We have to plead the precious blood of Jesus. What are you looking at? Praise again directs you to the heart of God. He inhabits the praises of his people. We put on power. I love it that Jehoshaphat, when he sent the praisers forth, when they were being invaded by a mighty army, as he sent the praisers forth, God began to rout 
the enemies, armies. They begin to kill each other off as, as the people of Israel just praised the Lord, as they just praised and worshiped him. This is a time to worship the Lord. This is a time where God is saying, I want your eyes bright. Come on. This is a time to have bright eyes. Don't you love that? That God loves light. He loves that we are light in the darkness. He tells us in Isaiah 60, arise, shine. Your light has come. What? God says, I've lit you up. Arise, shine. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is upon you. Darkness has covered the earth. Deep darkness, the nations. But the Lord, his glory is on you. Hey, you're all lit up. You are glorying. You are reflecting him. I love the Bible says that in Matthew that the, the lamp of the body is the eyes. And if your eye is single, then your whole body is full of light. But if it's evil, it's so dark. It's full of darkness. God wants our light, our eyes lit up with his light. He is mighty. Psalms 119.37 says, Turn away my eyes from looking at vanity and revive me in your ways. 1 John 2.15-17 says this, This month, come on, guard your eyes, guard your heart. It says, Do not love the world nor the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes... And the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away, and also its lust. But the one who does the will of God, he abides forever. I love in, in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, it says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the streams of life. And the Bible says, Put away from you deceitful lips and devious lips far from you. It says, watch the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Watch the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Do not turn to the right nor to the left. Turn your feet away from evil. What? Watch your path. Guard your heart. Come on. Because out of these flow the issues of life. God says, I want you to watch over because this is a month where there's a lot of spiritual warfare, but there's a lot of promises. This is a time where we are planting seeds that seem so dead, but God says, you know what? Seeds come alive. They come alive. Come on. This is the month also of the crab. The constellation for this month is cancer, which is the crab. And the crab, whether you know it or not, this is that we're studying this. We don't, we don't worship the stars. We are not into horoscopes or any of those things, but we know that God says that the, the times and seasons are in the sky, that he's given these things to us, that he wants to reveal himself to us, that the gospel is on display above our heads. And so you've got cancer, the crab and the, the one thing about crab is they have big eyes. There's the eyes again, where they have the little eyes going, the eyes going this way and that way. And also another thing about the crab is that they have the power to recreate. They have the power to regenerate, like a, a claw that's fallen off or, or, or a leg that's fallen off. They can re reproduce those things. And you know what else they do? They break off the old. And, and they get brand new armor. And this is the time to put on new armor. How many of you, you've, you've, you've been trudging along and your armor's all done and God wants to refresh you. He wants to revive you. He wants to make you new. He just wants you to come. He wants everything that's been cut off that you feel like you don't have anymore. Well, God says, I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the one that makes all things new. I want to make it new for you. So the crab is the power of renewal. It can replace an arm, a leg. This is a time to reflect on God's grace and put on a whole new armor, the armor of God. You're able to see through the physical reality beyond to the divine source. Again, what a gum. we're talking about our eyes. And we're talking about looking beyond the natural. We're looking into the heavenlies. We're looking at Christ. Our eyes are fixed upon him. One of the, the, the Hebrew word for crab is sartan, and it's to remove the body, to reveal the soul. 
We can put on a whole new armor and replace every limb that has been lost. This is a month of revelation so you can see beyond. I love Ephesians 10 through 12. It says about this. Finally, be strong in the Lord in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And it says this, for our struggles are not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rule forces of darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist the devil in the evil day. And having done everything to stand, Stand firm, therefore. And then it begins to tell you, put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with a preparation of God's peace, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. The, and this is the glory of the Lord's our rear guard. Come on. It says, it says, with all prayer and petition, praying at all times in the spirit on behalf of all the saints. God says, put it on. I'm going to make everything new. You just come to me. I'll refresh. I'll revive you. Ezekiel 36, 24. Through 27, for I will take from, from the nations and gather you from all the lands and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit within you and I'll remove the heart of stone, that hard crust. Come on, that old crust, uh, just like a crab has to break off the old. Come on. God says, I'll remove the heart of stone from your flesh and I'll give you a, a, a heart of flesh, soft, pliable. God says, I'll give you new armor. I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. God wants to give you a heart that you want to walk after him, that you love him. He want, the Bible says one of the, the what what the new birth does is he writes on your heart, his laws, his testimonies. No, you no longer have to wonder what to do. And, and and he writes it on your heart and gives you a desire to please God. And th then it says this, and you'll be careful to observe my ordinances. So the Hebrew name for the constellation is Sartan, and it also means film strip. So they call Tammuz a, the, the film strip month. And I love that. And they get it because that is what the word cancer or I should say, the constellation is called Sardin, which and it means film strip. And so this is why Tam Tamus is called the film strip month. Spartan also means to remove the mud. I love that. Let me say that again. It's called the film strip month, but it also means to remove the mud. Hey, you ever been muddy? Have you ever, ever had just not been able to see maybe ever... I remember when I was a kid, we had this one guy that was in our class and his glasses were so greasy. And I mean, you're just like, you're wondering how he could even see. He just needed them washed. Again, this is about removing mud and everything that obstructs your vision, everything that keeps you from the presence of God. You come and you, you come before the Lord and just repent and Jesus Christ. The Bible says if we confess your sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Again, blood's been shed for you. The Bible says about the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness for sin. Remember the carnelia, that stone that looks like the blood. God wants you to, wants to remind you, just come. I'll wash away the mud. I'll wash it away. I took it on the cross. You just received what I've done. I love this as a film strip month. month. Not too long ago, Donnie and I, were invited over to some friend's house and they they began to talk to us and my husband was kind of discouraged about some things and he he said you know I just not not a lot's been happening and I'm just wondering what to do and da, 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 da. And, and I I love that this guy goes well I just advise you and Debbie to sit down and go back through all the things God has taken you through. Go back and see the great things that God has done. Those hard times, how he brought you through. The mountaintops, the valleys. Just look and see what God has done. So this is kind of like the film strip month. Do you remember David when he was facing Goliath? 
you know, he's got this two testimonies because this is a month of opposites. You got Saul who says to David, you're just a youth and he's a seasoned warrior. You can't fight him. But David's like, I can fight him. And how did he do that? Well, he starts playing this film strip. He says, you know what? The Lord delivered a lion into my hands. I grabbed him by his beard and I killed him. Oh, yeah. And he said, and he delivered a bear into my hands. And this uncircumcised Philistine that's mocked the armies of the living God, he's going to be the same as that lion and bear. You know what? He was playing that film strip, the faithfulness of God, what God has done for them, what God had done for him over and over. You know, there's something about rehearsing the good things that God has done for you. There's something about looking back and seeing how, hey, you know what? I'm still here. It looks so hopeless and God has brought me through. Maybe, sometimes it may be like fireworks and sometimes it might just be just faithfulness, the faithfulness, the faithfulness of God. And all of a sudden you're like, hey, where'd that big problem go? Where did it go? You just see, rehearse and look with your eyes. Come on, the eyes of the spirit. Not the eyes of the flesh, but look what God has done. It's the film strip month. Again, this is a month to worship. This is a month to keep your eyes upon the Lord. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. The letter for this month is the, the het. And the het equals eight. And eight is the, the number beyond. Beyond the seven, which seven is perfect. Well, you know what? Go beyond. So, you know, it is a month of a, that, the eight is a, the number of abundance, but it's also the number of new beginnings. Again, did you hear that? God wants to make things new. Things that you may you feel like, oh, I've been like it, but things been cut off. I feel like I can't go forward. I love that he restores. I love that he restores with the canker worms eaten away. Reuben is all about that. That God takes someone that that has failed miserably and he turns it around. God is the God that can do that if we come to him in repentance. I love that about them. So the het is new beginnings, new life, one beyond. And the head is a doorway into new life and, and new beginnings. It's a gateway into a new realm. And we talked about that earlier, that God is taking us. He wants us to see beyond. He wants to take us beyond our vision, the natural, and look into the heavenlies. He wants our eyes fixed upon Jesus. Jesus' covenant given to us through the blood brought us into total new realm. That's what the heck is about. Again, Hebrews 10, 19, 20 says, A new and a living way. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh. The het is also, is also considered where it's a doorway into new realms, but is also considered a hupa. Because if you look at the het, it also has the Zion and the Vav in it. And one symbolizes a man and one symbolizes the woman and it symbolizes marriage and the hupa. The Jewish people would come, come and they would get under the hupa and they would make vows to one another. A hupa was a, a place where they were giving their lives over to God to protect and watch over them and their marriage, their family. Because when the two become one, well, then the, the seed comes alive and you're able to have children. You know what? This month the het is about life new beginnings it's about the realm beyond it's about god blessing you often often i have have i was looking for it. i have a necklace with a het upon it and the the het has a point that points upward again it's not about yourself it's about the grace of god it's not about all that you do the head tells you what it's not about all that you do but it's about all that he is it's not about all that you do but it's about all that he is it's not about about your labors it's not about the law it's about all that he is it's about the grace of god that's what the head is head is about life and it's about grace life is not a it says, life not based upon thou shall nots, but on what God has done. The head bridge points upward that reminds us that Jesus is open the way that no man can close. So this is a month, what? Of the head. 
It's a month to guard your mouth. And it's a month to guard your eyes. It's a good month where God Almighty, listen, all these things that happened during this month, the golden calf, where Moses comes coming down from the mountain. He's got, he's got the Ten Commandments. He's got all the instructions for the tabernacle. He's so excited. He's bringing these things down. And, and yet the Lord says, your, your people have corrupted themselves because they, they grew impatient. Again, we're talking about self-control this month. We're talking about holding fast. Remember what I said, do not throw away your confidence. It has great reward. The scripture that came to mind right before I started this was from 1 Thessalonians 5.21. But examine everything carefully. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Because what? That's what this month is about. It's about holding fast because God's got good for you. Because as Moses is coming down holding these, the, these, these tablets that were written with the very finger of God and he's coming down, he's, he's coming down with what he, what is going to change their lives. It's going to make them a nation of God's people that's ruled and, and, and taught by God. And he comes down and they, during that time, they become weary. They begin to, to think, huh, it's, you know, once Moses coming back, he probably died upon that mountain. Let's just do what we want to do. And they begin, they make themselves an idol and begin to riot and, and, and live, uh, worship this idol. It says this in 1 Corinthians 10, 6 through 13. Now these things happen for examples for us that we would not crave evil things as they all so craved. It says, do not be idolaters as some of them were. The, the Bible says the people sat down to eat and drink and stood up to play. You know what? And then it says this, do not act immorally as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in one day. Nor let them try the Lord as some of them did and were destroyed by the serpents. Nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as examples. And they were written for our instruction upon whom the end of the ages has come. And I wanted to leave you uh, with this verse right here. It says, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will make a way of escape. You know what? This scripture says, you know what? No matter what you're going through, God says, I'll give you the grace that you need to walk through this. During this month, there's a three-week period called the, the Between the Straits or three weeks of mourning. And during this time, the children of Israel failed the Lord miserably. They went after idols. They were diligent to watch over their hearts. They did not guard their gates. This is a time in Exodus 32 where Moses is coming down and he's holding the Ten Commandments and he's got the plans for the temple that was, that where God was going to come and dwell in their midst of them. And he, he's coming down and during this time, the children of Israel are like, what's taking Moses so long? He probably died upon that mountain. What's wrong? I, uh, we need a God to take us back to Egypt. We, da, 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 da. And so during that time, they made a God and they worshiped the God. And when Moses came down and he saw that he threw those, those stone tablets down and made them and took that idol and ground it into powder and put it in water and made it drink, made them drink. And 3,000 of these of children of Israel died that day because they rather serve an idol than rather to serve God. He, Moses said, if, if you're on the Lord's side, come over here. And if you're not, then they just went through and just killed those that were on the opposite side. What a terrible time. And during that time, there was a big setback. They lost spiritual momentum of going forward. They lost so much during that time. And this is also the time when the spies, again, went out into the wilderness. And they began to spy out the land. And I've already talked about that. How when they went out, out ten saw fear and, and they, saw, they saw this great promised land. But there's no way that... They could ever take it. 
because they didn't believe that God was that good and that God was that powerful. They didn't have their eyes fixed upon him. Their eyes were fixed upon the giants. Their eyes were fixed upon the walled cities. Their eyes were fixed upon their weapons of war. Their eyes were fixed upon everything that made them fearful rather than God. And then you got Caleb and Joshua who was looking at God and saying, Hey, our God's able to bring us into the land. Hey, they have no defense. God's taking that away from them. Hey, we can do it. God will give it to us. We find favor in Him. He'll do it. That's how God wants us to think every day, every day, but especially during this month, a Tammuz. This is a month to believe God. Examine everything carefully. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. It's a month to hold fast, self-control, month to hold fast to God. So this is the week when we're past through the straits. And I was listening to this one lady. I heard her name, Christ, Christine Vallis. She's amazing, such a sweetheart. She just feel the sweet love of God all over this woman. And she was just talking about how all these things God had good. And because their eyes were not fixed upon him, because they did not guard their hearts, because of these things, they didn't weren't able to receive the good things that God had for them. The promised land, the, the Ten Commandments, the law, the tabernacle, the joy of God's presence. They cut themselves off from these things because they, they weren't fixed. Their hearts were not fixed upon God. Their eyes are not fixed upon the things above, but upon this earth. And the, the Bible says not to look at the things that are seen, but to look at the unseen things. Because the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. He's talking about the spiritual realm. These things that God has for us, fix your eyes upon them. They're truer than true. They're they're more alive than you could ever believe. God's word will not return void. It will accomplish what it's sent to. So during this time, there's a whole bunch of things that happened. During this three-week period, the, the 17th and 8th, during Babylon's siege of Jerusalem, the Jews were forced to stop the daily offering and sacrifice because of the lack of the sheep. And this, again, this is the time where Moses came down from the mountain and the golden calf. This is the time where the spies, a whole month of, of Tammuz is where the spies were in the promised land. And this is a time when Aposmus burnt the holy Torah. This is a time where the idol was placed in the holy temple on this date. This is a time where the walls of Jerusalem were breached by the Romans in 69 CE. This is a month of oppositions. And this is a month of holiness, renewal. This is a month where God wants to give grace, but this is a month where many fall from grace because they don't guard their eyes. Their eyes are not fixed upon the Lord. They're not watching him. Again, watch over your heart with all diligence for from it flows the streams of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. Watch your mouth. What are you saying? What are you saying? Are you murmuring? Are you complaining? Are you agreeing with help? Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the streams of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put devious lips far from you. Watch, watch the path of your feet, and all your ways will be established. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Turn your eyes from evil. What he's saying, fix your eyes straight ahead. Look at me. I am the way. This doesn't have to be a difficult time. If you'll worship, if you'll plead the blood of Jesus, if you'll fix your eyes upon Jesus, he'll bring you through. As you keep, and, and as you stay united with people who are people of faith, you know what? I, I, this is a time, too, of covenant where the shaking of hands of union. This the, One of the, the body part for this time is the right hand. And it's a time to come into covenant with those that love and fear, fear him. But don't to watch your covenant. You don't want to be joined. Like the ten with the ten spies that had a bad report. Join yourself with Caleb's. Join yourself with Joshua's. Join yourself with men and women of great faith. So, straits are for protection. Straits are shortcuts. I, I love this um one scripture, Psalms eighteen eighteen through nineteen. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth. 
also into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. You know what? It's like, God, sometimes you feel like you're being squeezed, but God's going to bring you through and you come in into a large place, a large place of his goodness and his grace. God is a mighty God and there is nothing that he cannot do. So this is the month of Tammuz, and this is a time to guard your heart, guard your mind, guard your vision, and remember Reuben, his name speaks of vision. Behold the sun. And let's say, I love this, behold the sun, S-O-N, Jesus Christ. God sent his son to redeem all our junk. Behold the sun. If you keep your eyes on the sun, you're going to pass through this month. And victory and enlargement. Come on. God's got good for you. He's a good God. Now, Father, I just thank you for those, Father God, that are uh, that have taken time to listen today. And I, I ask you to bless them. Bless their families. I thank you, Father God, for a heart that's fixed. I love the scripture in Psalms. Oh, Lord, my heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. I will sing praises. I will sing praises. Awaken the dawn. Come on. God wants you again to praise him. Father, I just thank you for a spirit of praise. Holy Spirit, you're taking us into places of praise that we're making covenant with people of like mind, that love and fear you, that Lord trust you, that cling to you, Father God, that speak words of faith and act that acclaim you, that make you big, Father God. I thank you and praise you, Father God, that we're looking back upon your faithfulness, Lord. We're fixing our eyes. It doesn't matter how hard or how difficult it is. We're examining everything carefully. We're holding fast to what is good. We're abstaining from every form of evil, Father God. I thank you. We're reminded. We're got through the 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 carnelian stone that's that looks like blood. When you just uh, under a microscope, it looks like blood. That Lord, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. That that your blood has redeemed us. It's justified us. It's made us new. It washes away that junk over our mind lord god an evil conscience father god that when the blood's applied the destroyer passes over oh god we just thank you dot 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 we've been given access into the very throne of grace through your precious blood thank you father god to remind us of the constellation the cancer the crab we just decree and declare lord god that you break every curse lord god you break every shell around about our lives, Lord God. That, Lord, everything that's held us back is broken in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you for brand new armor, brand new, Father God, heart, that all the hard, crusty stuff is gone. And God, we just thank you for the new life, Lord God, that the crab represents, Lord, and those big eyes, Lord, that are focused upon you. We decree it, we declare it, Father God. In Jesus' name, no idols, Lord God. In Jesus' name, that we walk in righteousness, Lord God, this month. God, now we give you praise and we worship you and we give you thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, thank you for, for joining me this day or at night, depending on when you listen to this. And God bless you. You are so loved by God. You have a wonderful month of Tammuz. Bye-bye.